Hey everybody, it's Madison with Health by Ratio, and in this video, we're going to be talking about the importance of glute strength and glute engagement in a functional way to help support the knee in recovering from surgeries, procedures, or re prevent recurring tweaks, pains, injuries, all the above. Um, and if you aren't familiar with what we do, uh, my team and I at Health by Ratio, we consist of licensed physical therapists, corrective exercise specialists, orthopedic movement specialists, as well as functional health coaches. And we work with our clients in a holistic way to get them out of recurring injuries and pains, get them through their rehabilitation process, but then also bridge the gap to their functional activities that they do on a daily basis, as well as any fitness and or athletic activities that they like to do to stay fit, to stay active, to enjoy their lives. So we try to bridge that gap to make sure that they come from rehabilitation to true function. And so the glute complex is integral in all facets of how we, uh, all facets of our bodies and the importance around them, but especially around knees. And I wanted to do this topic because so often when I'm connecting with people on the free video assessments that we offer, where we're analyzing how someone moves and how, and their ranges of motion and all that kind of stuff, who's dealing with a knee injury, or when I'm scrolling through various posts and stuff like that on Facebook and Instagram and whatnot, when people are recovering from knee injuries, especially knee surgeries, like ACL surgeries or knee replacements, meniscus, that kind of stuff, it's the quad is always talked about. Like I got to restore my quad strength. I'm working on those quads. I'm trying to get my knee better. And to a certain extent, that that's a good thing to focus on, especially in the first weeks after surgery, where we've been uh, like due, due to the injury, we've probably been relatively sedentary, we've had some atrophy, and we don't have that range of motion to fully extend the knee. So yes, it's important for us to rehabilitate the quad and why so many of our uh, physical therapy appointments initially in those first weeks and months uh, after a, a significant knee surgery are focused around that quad. But the issue is, is that often people get it ingrained that I need to rehabilitate my quad and that's the only thing that I need to focus on from here on out. And in all the years that I've done this, now over 12, and the literally thousands of people that I've met with have probably, I would guess between 500 and 1,000 people dealing with knee injuries specifically, I have never seen, tested, worked with anybody that had a knee injury where their glutes weren't as weak, if not significantly weaker in, in functional ability than the quads. The quads are normally at best, even with the glutes, and most of the time are further along, are more dominant. And as a matter of fact, having more quad dominance is the root cause of why most injuries occur. When our quads are really active throughout our lives, then they take over when we walk and when we squat. And when our quads take over and our, our glutes are shutting off, Things like ankle pronation occur and knee valgus occurs. We just had a client, Julie, who uh, gave us an awesome update that was dealing with uh, recurring knee injuries and just did this incredible hike and said the knees felt amazing. And it was because we've been working on her tendency to ankle pronate due to her quad dominance where the adductors take over and the glute complex doesn't fire. So the knee goes inward. I'm over exaggerating it. This isn't as bad as what most people do, but the knee goes inwards as they're stepping through or stepping down on a hike where they're pounding this way and their knee is going inward. That's what wears and tears on the knee. And then, or if you are an athlete and you're actually like loading into a jump or landing from a jump, if you're pronating and the knee is going inward, that puts so much strain on the knees. So we get focused on quad uh, uh, strength to help our knee extension back up. And then we think, okay, that's stabilizing the knee. But we neglect this really important glute complex that supports us in preventing this knee from going into valgus, which basically means the knee collapsing inside of the big toe. This proper function of the glute medius and glute maximus and proper hip extension and the stability of being able to abduct the, the hip or not adduct the hip or the femur, I should say, is really, really important in maintaining the health of our knees on an ongoing basis. So I want to talk about glute activation and how to do that properly. And there's a number of ways to get these guys to wake up and a many 
physical therapists and a lot of treatments. And, and like after we get some of that quad um, stability going, we'll start to work a little bit more toward glute specific work. But the issue is, is that it's very isolated work. It's like clamshells or glute bridges or uh, lateral band walks or monster walks, like those donkey kicks, fire hydrants, like those kind of like glute specific exercises. And those are great for doing a, getting some isolated glute activation and some glute strength, just like doing a knee extension can give us some isolated quad strength. But does it translate to how I walk? Does it translate to how I sit down and stand up or squat down to pick something up off the ground? No, they're, they're, I, that's like saying I did a bunch of bicep curls and by me working on my biceps, now I should be able to pick something up and pick it up and, and put it over my head. Like, no, that, that just worked on an isolated muscle. It's not necessarily a functional movement of lifting and moving anything. So the, the issue is, is that that's at best what we typically get is isolated glute activation. No, we got to translate this to how our body moves. So there's, like I said, a number of things that we can do here, but let's take our, our handy either TheraBand or a tube band like what I have here. And instead of doing something like a lateral band walk, which so many of us have done, and there's a time and a place for these things. They, they help us get a little bit, like I said, of some uh, isolated uh, activation or like a monster walk where we're moving forward and backwards while keeping the feet straight with it. Instead, we can incorporate things like squats or single leg squats or hinges and use this band to give us a tactile cue, a physical cue to prevent us from buckling our knees in. So for instance, if I wanted to squat and teach my knees to stay where I want them to be, which is kind of in alignment with the mid to outs on my foot as I squat, I can have this band at my knees, get my feet straight and pointed straight ahead. Now this is important. I don't want my feet turned out because my knees can then still, if I kind of eyeball it, I can have my knee still coming inside of my big toe, but it feels like my knees are wide. So I want my feet straight here and I'm going to squat down and push those knees toward my pinky toes as I'm going down. I'm going to fight this band's tendency of pulling me inward as I get more. And I can do this assisted. Like if, if you're thinking I'm just coming off of uh, an injury, I can barely sit down and stand up. Then I could hold on to something like a TRX or I could hold on to a post um, and give myself some support and kind of sit back on my heels more. And I also don't have to go to all the way chair level. I can stop my range of motion to whatever's comfortable. I can build my strength up with it. Then as I feel more stable with it, I got to train this single leg position because that's what I do when I walk or when I run or when I'm walking up and down stairs, I get to one leg or the other. So let's get one foot planted. Let's get the other leg out a little bit. So I got some tension where the band is trying to pull that knee inward. I'm not going to let it. I'm not going to let it win. I'm going to keep it there. And just doing this standing and doing some movements here can be a great way of isolating that uh, functionally, uh, getting that glute medius to fire with some little isolated movements here. But it translates to me standing if I was standing on one leg. Then I can start as I get more comfortable and I can use assistance here. I could hold on to something. I could position myself next to a wall to support myself as I do it. But I can get into some single leg squats where I'm trying to fight that knee and keep my core engaged with my shoulders neutral as I go in and out of this. The next step would be incorporating upper body movements with this. So I can get a resistance band up, set up and do things like uh, with the band pulling me around my knees, I can get into a squat still using that same cue and then rowing at the top here and going in and out of this. I can do the same concept with a rotation. I can squat and then wood chop as I come to the top of each thing. I can start playing around with this single leg. I can have one leg planted and going in and out of that squat and then row at the top. If I have a free weight, I can incorporate some type of overhead press as I'm doing this or some type of overhead press or single arm press. This is what gets much more functional in recruiting our body the way that we use it when we're picking something up and putting it in the cupboard above or if we're playing a sport of any kind, we can do these various exercises but potentially incorporate some more fast twitch work 
as our body is ready for it. So we can translate it to like more of how we would be functioning if we're running and changing directions and cutting or t getting tackled or whatever. Or like when we're doing um, these exercises, we just up the tempo a little bit, but always work on this functional knee stability where we're getting that knee in alignment with the mid to outside of our foot and prioritizing that uh, glute activation. Now, all these exercises also activate my quads. So I am also working on that quad musculature. It's not like they're getting ignored, but I'm really focusing on my posterior chain here. I'm working on that glute stability of the knee, not just my quad strength to restore my knee extension. That's important initially, but if I want to get back to my functional life, which all of us do, we're, we're not just trying to like get the knee to feel better when I'm sitting and standing. I want this knee to feel better when I'm out hiking and enjoying nature or when I'm going to for, take the dogs for a long walk. Or if I want to get back into running, of course, I want my knee to feel stable in those positions. So I got to bridge this gap and get more functional in our glute strength, not just isolated clamshells and glute bridges. We got to translate this to single leg positions that's in standing, obviously <laughs> first bridging that gap by going into like basic squatting patterns and basic hinging patterns and then going into lunging patterns and then single leg stance and then and we can rebuild this thing it doesn't have to take months it can be over the course of uh, every couple of weeks you're progressing to the next thing and you're getting your knee a little bit more stable a little bit more functional so guys if you're interested in figuring out what stage of your recovery you're in and like what progressions you should be looking to move toward like how do i take this to the next step so that my knee can recover well and continue to go in the right direction. Like what are my next kind of sequences of exercises I need to prioritize? Or on the other end of the spectrum, what mobility techniques do I need to do? If I'm having difficulties with these ranges of motion to do them properly, what's restricting me? Is it something around my hips? Is it something around my ankles? Is it something else entirely different? then we would love to connect with you for free on our video assessments that we do. And we start off with an initial intake call where we just try to figure out your background, what your goals are, and, and get a good overview of what your body has been through. And then we connect on a video call where we run through a number of full body assessments and postural tests and range of motion tests to see how and why your body is doing what it's doing, and then create a game plan with you to get it moving back to full range as a stable motion. So if you're interested in that, we'll link our calendar below this video. Hope you check it out. Enjoy the rest of your day.